Have you ever wondered where architects come up with ideas to create these elaborate buildings, public spaces, and other designs? Well, today I'll be breaking down how exactly that process works. We'll talk about how the process from a simple napkin drawing goes through different design iterations to finally arrive at the final product that you guys know and see today. Now, my name is Carter and I've been in the design world since 2016 and have been practicing as a landscape architect for the past two years now somehow. I don't know where the time went because I feel like I was just in college literally yesterday. So I've had plenty of time to study my fair share of architects and other designers as well have had the pleasure to work on some of these projects from start to finish as well in my career. So that said, I'll be breaking down the architecture process through the lens of a landscape architect. But that doesn't mean that how the architecture or other design world processes are really much different at all. Because the way in which you arrive at a final destination and go through the processes to reach that final destination are very much the same and often require you to collaborate with other disciplines along the way to arrive at that final destination too. So let's talk about where a design starts. Now design is born because of a need. This could be from a client, a competition, or an event. And what you're gonna be given in the very first stages here is a request that you need to fill in order to get that project and be awarded that design opportunity. So in the design world, we call this requirement a program. So here you get to find out more about that person's list, the competition list, or the event list on what exactly you need to achieve and what the parameters are inside this project that you're going to be working on. For example, let's say that a plot of land has recently become available because of a land grant operation a couple years back. And a client would like to take that plot of land and turn it into a multi-use high rise with an adjacent promenade and other downtown connections all in one plot of land. So now you would be given the scope, you would know the parameters, you would know the project, and from there, we can start to move towards our initial design phases. So typically we start by evaluating that program and that list. Then we'll move towards researching the site, the location, anything about the history of that site, its previous uses, etc. Then we'll move to the actual site visit where we'll see if there's any opportunistic views, if there's sun direction that we have to think of, shade, vegetation, and anything else that might be advantageous to us in our design and to the client. Now, from here, we're gonna develop a Part T diagram. A Part T diagram is just a fancy word for a concept or an idea, and is typically made up of a series of lines or a group of lines that's somewhat inspired from something and can be inspired from a few different things. These diagrams could be inspiration-driven, program driven or form driven, as well as a multitude of other reasons to create a Part T diagram as well. An example of an inspiration concept could be something that you took from the site, its history, or anything else you learned during the site analysis phase that maybe inspired you to move towards that project or that idea, as well as an inspiration from another project that might fit perfectly in this design setting. Now, form-driven concepts are derived from popular architecture form. So this could be a shape of a building, it could be a series of circles, rectangles, or geomorphic shapes that shapes how your overall design will be networked and flowed out. And lastly, the program-driven concept is based off of a need, let's say if it's recreationally themed or if it's park themed. From here, you'll generate a bunch of different parties and concepts and you'll have your first review process from here. And then once you get the okay to proceed, you've won the project, you can move forward with the project, it's going to be yours to design and further develop. You can then move to the official first design phase, which we call SD or otherwise known as schematic design. So in this phase, we do what I like to call throwing darts. In the schematic design phase, we start to take those party diagrams and actually start to develop working plans, working building models from the original party concept idea. So in this, we typically develop three to five, maybe more different schemes that we then show to our colleagues, other disciplines, and the client and start to go through some review processes and see what sticks, what doesn't stick, 
what's it really important to the client, what's not important to the project, and then start to kind of sift through and see what is left over at the end. So if you win in a Part T diagram on a form approach, this could be exploring different options in rectilinear, curved, geomorphic, biomorphic, things like that. Or you could see if the layout is affected, how the sun plays a role on the building, its other environments, and how things in your program are placed throughout your project. It's important that in this phase, you're doing the dream big, think big ideas because you're not really going for the most realistic thing. You're just trying to see what can be accomplished on this site and what can we possibly do if we push the limits all the way to the end. Now this phase can last a week or two or even a few months depending on how large the scope of the project is and what the project timeline and end goal is at the end of it. But eventually after you go through a bunch of different iterative processes, you'll start to narrow down your list to maybe two or three, or maybe you'll even have one. And at that point, you'll be ready to submit your schematic design set and move towards the next phase, which is DD or otherwise known as design development. It's also important to know that in this SD submission, it's mainly an idea for pricing and to get a sense on what this project is going to cost and then compare of what that cost estimate is based on your total budget for that project and what the goal is for that project. But in DD is where we start to get a little bit more real, more realistic, see what actually works, what actually doesn't work, develop that one scheme even further and try to narrow down that project and what it really means to the client and what it means to be on that site. This means taking a closer look at just about every aspect of the site, the circulation patterns, the building layout, the egress, all of those things are very important and are looked at much more closely in this phase. This is the phase where the level of collaboration will rise a ton and you'll be working with your client more, other disciplines, and seeing how you can come up with the best product and sift through what exactly is wanted in this design at the end. So here your design is still changing a ton and the phase can last a couple months to six months, depending again on how long that design goal and end product is. The end goal of this phase is to make sure that this design gets signed off by the client or other review processes so that it can move forward. This may mean meeting all the requirements in the program, some other certifications like LEED, open space requirements and things like that so that it can get pushed forward and actually be carried through and built. And the other goal is to take a really much closer look at the actual pricing of the entire set and bid documents so that people can get ready to create those bid documents so that they can sign a contractor on as early as possible. Of course, this requires another round of submittal processes. And once that's done, approved, and it's signed off on, you now move into the next phase, which is the last phase of the drawing, so to speak, which is construction documenting. Here is where we figure out how to actually make the project work. So what happens here is there's a lot of push and pull. There's a lot of working things out. The minute details are getting fleshed out. You're figuring out what works, what doesn't work, what do I need to change to make it work? And it's a lot of push pull to other disciplines. And it's a lot of back and forth with the client to make sure that this thing really works and is really carried out how you intended it to be and is built the way you intended it to be. So this oftentimes changes the design a ton and can be a long process sometimes, it could take six months, a whole year, um, depending on how long it takes and how big the project is and how much small details there are to do in this project. In this phase, you're figuring out how literally everything works from start to finish, from the ground all the way to the very top of that tower. All of it needs to work, all of it needs to be detailed from top to bottom, and it all needs to coincide with each other and work. So naturally that means there's the absolute most collaboration between your peers and other disciplines. And you're going to be taking very, very close looks at things like grading and all of those things that really matter to make sure that this project actually works and functions properly. But after all that goes through, you're then on to the last phase in the design process, which is CA or known as construction administration. Here's where you actually get to see that project that you worked on for way too long and way too many hours actually get carried out and built. 
So here is where you really need to have a good project manager that really knows what your design intent is. So that way, when it's get carried out through construction, it's done the right way, how you intended and properly works out. It's also an important time to pay very close attention as it's getting built because problems may arise and may require you to go back into the drawings, fix them, revise them, submit addendums. So that way it's carried out properly and can meet the end goal and end build time. Now this phase can go on for quite some time. It can go on for um, a couple months. It could be a couple years. It could be five, six, seven years um, of building this thing. It really depends on where it is, what it involves with and all those things. But nonetheless, that is the short version of what the design process looks like and how an architect goes from the napkin drawing all the way through to what you see, walk through and experience today. So overall, the project that you worked on could be as short as a couple months. It could be a summer or it could be seven years. You really don't know. I have a project right now that won't be done till 2030. So you can just get a perspective on the length of some of these projects, especially in the urban context, as opposed to residential, the urban projects go through a lot more review processes, whereas residential is much more client based and is all about how fast and willing they are to move forward on their designs. But yeah, did you guys know that the design process was actually this long? When I joined the field a couple years ago, I really had no idea on how long some of these projects actually take and it was somewhat of a mind changing moment for me. I also had just no idea the amount of collaboration that is required to get something like this from just an idea to actually being built. So now in the real world, I have just a even greater appreciation for experiencing the world that I live in cities, urban context, things like that. It's just, you really know after you've gone through a project or two, how much every little detail is really carried out from start to finish and thought about. That said, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about the design process. So drop a comment below on what you guys think about it and how you thought design process was and how maybe it's changed in your mind after this video or through the profession. And if you enjoy this video, hit that like button for me. It helps me know that this video was helpful to you and also helps push this content out to others as well. And if you liked my video and this type of content and you haven't subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and check out my channel for some other great videos that I've made. But anyways, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you guys for listening and I'll see you next time. Peace.